In this video, I'm gonna give you five specific methods on how you can talk to the universe and start asking it for what you want. Welcome back to the Law of Attraction epilogue series, episode three. In today's episode, we're gonna be talking about how we talk to the universe. And in order to understand how we talk to the universe, you must understand one fundamental thing. As I said in the previous episode, the only reason that the manifest physical universe exists is to reflect consciousness. So your life experience, all of your reality and life experience is essentially one grand audition for your attention. You are like the sun in the solar system. If the sun in the solar system were to wither and die, then everything in the entire solar system that has life would also wither and die. Nothing in the solar system can live or exist without the sun. The same is true for your experience of your reality. Every thought, every feeling, every perception, every sensation that you have is 100% entirely dependent on your energy in order to sustain itself. That which you do not give attention to, that which you do not give energy to, does not exist. And that's the first step to understanding how you communicate with the universe. The problem develops because we are unconscious of the fact that this is happening at all given times. And so anything that happens to you in your life experience, you actually do not have to experience it. I know that sounds ridiculous to the thinking mind, but that is absolutely an inarguable fact. If you decide not to pay attention to something, it's as if it never happened. So somebody else might be in the same room as you and some event happens, some argument breaks out, they pay attention to it and let it rifle them up and get angry and you ignore it. And so for one person, they experienced somebody arguing and they couldn't believe how rude they were, etc. And to you, nothing happened at all. And your state of being, your vibrational frequency was not affected. So we're very accustomed to hearing in law of attraction circles that thoughts create reality. Now this is hypothetically speaking true, but what's actually true fundamentally is not that thoughts create reality because thoughts are simply empty vessels. Thoughts have no energy in and of themselves. They are simply auditioning for your attention and saying, hey, would you like to energize this idea? And you either say yes and you focus and give it attention and you assign it significance, or you say, no thank you, that's not for me, and you ignore it. And the thoughts tell your energy that you supply the thought which direction the energy goes into. So the key is that you want to give your energy to the thoughts that resonate with you, that make you feel good, and are high vibrational thoughts. And you want to ignore thoughts that are low vibrational thoughts that don't resonate with you. And so this is how we talk to the universe. So I'm gonna give you five methods on how to do just this, starting with number one, start paying attention to your attention. From the time you're born, the universe starts asking you, hey, what do you want? And so the critical question to ask is, how do we say yes to something we want from the universe, and how do we say no to something that we don't want from the universe? The answer is found in mathematics. Scientifically speaking, mathematically speaking, we know that the universe is made up of ones and zeros. It's all a gigantic binary data set. And so that's fundamentally what the universe is constructed out of. And so a one would represent yes. A zero would represent no. Because again, the universe only speaks energy. So if the universe presents you with something, any vibrational reaction you give to it is saying, yes, please give me more of that from the universe's perspective. And if you don't want it, you ignore it and the universe goes, okay, he or she doesn't want this. Because see, everything is fighting for your attention, for your energy. And so if you're stuck in a negative thought pattern, that's because it's juicy, it works on you. Every time that it comes up, you give it your energy. And so the universe looks at that and says, wow, he or she really likes this thought pattern, let's just keep cranking it out. This person really likes this type of circumstance, let's keep cranking it out. Until you start ignoring it, you're gonna keep getting it because the universe is just your servant. It's just here to reflect what you want. 
But you have to understand that it's not looking at your words or your thoughts or anything from the human mind sense. It's only looking at where your attention is going. Number two, think and speak in the present tense. The universe exists outside of time and space because time and space are human-made ideas. There is no past and there is no actual future. The only thing the universe knows is now because, as we all know, now is all that exists. You can think and speak in the past or future tense, but you can only feel in the present. And that's why it's dangerous to be thinking and feeling in the past or future tense instead of the present tense. Because if you're saying to yourself as your affirmation, I will be successful, I will be successful. Well, the universe is actually hearing, I don't wanna be successful right now. I don't wanna be successful right now. So you have to start feeling like you're already that which you're trying to attract. You have already become that which you desire. Because in truth, you are. Every possible reality already exists. The thing you want already exists. So you can start to feel like you already have it. You can start to feel what it would be like if you were already successful. You can start to feel what it would be like if you already had that thing you're trying to manifest. And then consciousness will begin to collapse around that feeling and begin bringing you what you're desiring. Number three, expand your consciousness. Why would this be important? Well, because the more expanded your consciousness is, the less and less you're going to be duped and tricked into giving your energy to things that you don't actually want to energize. So another way to say expanding your consciousness is to say expanding your awareness. Awareness of yourself, awareness of your own mind activity, awareness of the universe around you. See, life is not like a story that has a set beginning point and a set ending point. Life is a game. So consider how a poker game works. If you're sitting at a table with a bunch of expert poker players and you barely know how to play poker, they're going to take full advantage of you. Every time they make a bluff, you're taking their actions at face value and falling right into their trap. And secondly, every time you draw a hand, you're telegraphing your hand to everyone because you're reacting based on what you're seeing. And so they know what cards you probably have in relation to what cards they have. So you stand absolutely no chance at ever beating these guys until you start to expand your consciousness. The more variables you learn about the game, the more rules you understand about the game, the better and better you can play. So a simple definition of expanded consciousness is to become aware of more variables in the universe. To become aware of variables that you were not previously aware of. And every time you do this, you expand your consciousness a little bit more. And once you understand the game you're playing, then you can start taking control of the game and start making the right moves. Number four, listen to your guidance system. So you often hear me repeat that the universe does not speak English or Spanish, it speaks energy. And now this is not because the universe is dumb or something. The universe is infinite intelligence itself. So it's not that it doesn't know English or Spanish. It's not that it doesn't understand what language is. Language is an expression of the universe. It's simply the fact that energy is what the universe is. And so it can only be what it is. And the universe knows what we don't always realize, which is that thoughts and words are extremely unreliable. Our thoughts and words, for the vast majority of us, almost never line up with our actual state of being. The universe is not going to waste its time listening to your all over the place thoughts and words. It's going to just read your truest inner vibration, which is whatever you are desiring. So what is the guidance system? Simple. Your feelings are the guidance system. If it feels good, that's because it's true and it's a path you should follow. If it feels bad, that's because it's not true and it's a path you should not follow. This is why I always say to see only what resonates with you. And some people say, well, you shouldn't just do what feels good all the time because you might go tell someone off because you think it'll feel good. But that's a subtle mistake of paying attention to what the mind is saying. The ego tries to convince you that you should go tell that person off because it'll feel so good. But it's telling you to tell that person off because you don't feel good, because whatever happened caused you to feel negative. And so your higher self, your guidance system is trying to tell you this is a negative experience. This is a negative thought. Ignore it. Move on. It's not something that's going to lead you to higher vibrations. 
But if you listen to the mind, you're gonna to continue to energize that pattern. You're gonna do what the mind is telling you to do. You're gonna think what it's telling you to think and then further energize that negative vibration. So it's really the simplest thing. You are already amazing at this because you are the universe. So your native language is also energy. You are already perfect at knowing what feels good and knowing what feels bad. You don't need any education in this. You can't even get any better at this. This is what you are absolutely the best at. So it's simple. Follow what resonates, ignore what doesn't resonate. To the best of your ability, give no significance or no attention to things that make you feel bad. And the simplest way to know if something is in resonance with you versus something that's not in resonance with you is abundance versus lack. If the feeling you are feeling causes you to feel more abundant, like you need less, like you have more, then this is a vibration coming from love energy. And so follow it. If what you are thinking or feeling is causing you to feel like you lack something, like you need to do something in order to improve or enhance yourself, that is coming from a negative vibration, that is coming from fear, and that is something you should ignore. So the guidance system is simple. Just continue to follow the breadcrumb trail of whatever feels good. Don't think about it, don't question it. If it feels good, follow it. That simple. Take the mind out of the equation and follow the heart because the heart always knows the right direction. Number five, start utilizing the power of repetition. If we want to understand how the universe works, then we have to look no further than our own subconscious mind. The universe works exactly the same way that our subconscious mind works. The law of attraction only reads and only pulls from your subconscious mind. Your conscious mind is being ignored at all times because your conscious mind is always ping-ponging back and forth between different thoughts. It's always unstable, but whatever is in the subconscious mind is there because you've allowed it there. You've given it enough energy to condense it into your frequency, and that's what the law of attraction is looking at. So in order to understand the main difference between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind, there are three important distinctions for us to understand. The first distinction is that the subconscious mind does not have the ability to reject anything. Why? Because again, the universe is equally validating all points of view. So it's not going to decide for you what's good and what's bad, what's healthy and unhealthy. It's up to you to decide. The second distinction is that the subconscious mind cannot distinguish between real and imagination. That's why you can imagine certain scenarios and revisit past memories and feel them like it's actually happening. It's only the subconscious mind that can create feelings. That's also why we can't simply think our way out of depression or things of that nature. So it's important for us to be in the present moment and not live in the past where our painful memories lie. Because the more we allow ourselves to obsess over past mistakes, it's going to actually attract more of those type of experiences. That's also why people who tend to live in the past also tend to keep repeating the same mistakes from the past. People who live in the present can deal with their past mistakes and learn from them. The third distinction is that the subconscious mind does not have an agenda. It's not trying to get anywhere or make anything out of you. It's literally just a filing cabinet of stored data. Whatever gets the most attention goes in the filing cabinet. All your social conditioning from the time you're born until now is sitting in the subconscious mind. And it's not gonna filter out the unhealthy thoughts for you. It's up to you to judge and interpret what things to give energy to and what things to ignore. Because where your attention is going, your energy is going. And where your energy is going is what's getting stored. We're very good at keeping track of our conscious minds, but we're not so good at keeping track of our subconscious minds. And the truth is that the conscious mind is sort of just like the gatekeeper, but the subconscious mind is where the party's happening. And the body only pulls from the subconscious mind to create feelings. And likewise, the ego is only happening in the subconscious mind, which is why even though none of us want to have an ego, we all have one anyways. If we want to get rid of the ego, we have to stop energizing it. And now this is when we can start utilizing the power of repetition. Let's say that you're a very insecure person with very little confidence and you want to manifest yourself into a confident, secure person. So just start repeating to yourself, I am the most confident person in the world. Make that your mantra and continue to repeat it all throughout the day. Or you can just take 10 minutes a day and meditate using this as your mantra. But it's important that you don't just say the words and let them be empty words. 
but try to feel what it would feel like if you really were the most confident person in the world. And so it doesn't matter that you aren't the most confident person in the world yet. That's completely irrelevant. Ignore what's happening right now, become blind to your circumstances right now, and choose to see what resonates with you. Imagine what it would feel like to be the most confident person, to be secure, to be triggerless, to be someone that radiates positive energy and attracts people to you. If there's a book you read that makes you feel really good, if there's a podcast, if there's a YouTube video that makes you feel more confident, keep watching it, keep reading it, keep listening to it over and over and over and over again. Because the ego, the mind, is trying to get you to continually reinforce the insecurity. It's trying to get you to continually repeat insecure thoughts. So you have to beat the ego at its own game. You have to force your conscious mind to continually reinforce the positive thinking, the positive manifestation that you're trying to create. And very, very quickly, it will start to condense into some energetic form. And then the subconscious mind will immediately grab hold of it, pull it into your field, and then you start feeling naturally more confident. And when you feel confident, your behavior, your actions, your words will reflect what you're feeling. So in closing, something I repeat all the time is that you are the universe. Therefore, talking to the universe really just means talking to your higher self. It's you that you're talking to, and it's you that's running the show. You are in the driver's seat, and you, and only you, control your state of being. You are the center of your universe, and nobody else. Nobody else can come and step into the center of your universe and fix things for you. So you've got to investigate. You've got to do it. And only that which goes uninvestigated can flourish. Black mold can only grow under the fridge if you never look under the fridge. That which you put into the light cannot be kept in darkness. So if you are just constantly being honest with yourself, investigating your internal state of being, then the universe is going to see that and you're going to continually be cleaning out all the dirty stuff, all the negative stuff that you don't want to energize any longer. And the universe will reward you by giving you the positive, by giving you the things you desire. But it's up to you to take charge because this is your life, this is your reality, and this is your individual experience. Nobody else is going to do it for you. And when you cleanse yourself and purify your own state of being, this is how you truly talk to the universe. Welcome back to LOA University and it's time to reveal the answers to the Instagram quiz. First question was, does the universe judge or interpret anything we ask for? The answer was B, no. And 84% of you guys got that one right, so good job on you guys. Question two was, how do we say yes to something the universe offers to us? The answer was D, any reaction at all, and only 46% of you guys got that one right. But now you know, so it's going to be 100% from now on. Question three was, how do we say no to something the universe offers us? The answer was B, by ignoring it. And 30% of you guys got that one right. Ah, oh, sad face. Question four was, the subconscious mind cannot blank. The answer was D, all of the above. And 70% of you guys got that one correct. So good job on you guys on question four. And then question five was, expanded consciousness occurs when you become aware of variables in the universe which you were not aware of before. And 100% of you guys got the right answer. So bravo to you guys. You guys crushed it this week, especially compared to last week, no offense. In total, you guys answered 67% of these questions correct this week, which is a huge improvement from last week. So pat yourselves on the back. You guys crushed it, way to kick ass. The next quiz will be dropping on my Instagram in a couple of days. So stay tuned for that. See you guys next week.